guys from Dead Excited to do my first video on the MX-5. So I haven't introduced it on the channel yet, but I've got a Mark 1 MX-5 that's turbocharged. Um, I love it. It's been like a two year restoration for me. It's recently MOT'd all turbocharged and all legit on the road out and running. It's brilliant. It's had its final map. Uh, but one of the things I wasn't happy with it might just be in my head to be honest is the way the coils are so in this video i'll be swapping from these old coil packs uh, with ht leads a bit of an old-fashioned design mid 90s um, and they are the original ones on the car so they the cars are 96 so old now 25 years to these ngk um, they are from an audi r8 ngk coil on plug conversion it runs a custom harness that I bought from Alex Hickson, who also provided those coils. Um, and then I'm going to fit them, show you how to fit them, show you how to wire the harness in, which is a doddle. Um, we've got to cut the ECU case a little bit to add a little extension um, little extension piece to the board. Uh, so I'm already running an ME221 uh, Gen 2 on this car. Um, we'll get the map done as well. So I'll show you that. Alex has sent me all the instructions. So I'll be following his instructions throughout. Uh, but this is just a bit of a visualisation. So I hope you enjoy it. I'll get it from first thing to unplug the coils, the, the HT leads, to fitting them, to mapping them, to car starting. We'll do a bit of a sound check as well because it's changing from um, a wasted spark to a full sequential. Don't think that'll make any difference. But um, some people say it like, runs a little smoother, idles a little smoother. I've got no idea. So we'll see how it goes. Right, let's crack on. So, Ayrton's going to tell us what tools we need for this. What do we need? Um, Screwdriver. Yeah. Sockets. Yeah. Ratchet. Yeah. And what else? Um, what is it? 12 mil spanner. 12 mil spanner. And what have I forgot? What was the last thing? A drill. We'll probably need a drill. So the first job to do is follow nice instructions. Job one is to take off the original coil pack. You've got three bolts. Um, one here. This spanner is just on. Oh, that's that one. And you've got one here. And then, depending on whether you've had these off before, and I have, there is one directly in the centre beneath. It's a massive pain to get at, so I doubt if someone's had it off before. And it's pretty fit. I'll take these out. Luckily, these are these holes don't go anywhere, so you haven't got to blank them back up. So you can't bother. I would do that, and then after that, I've got to take individual coils out and taking note of which plug. So I'll tell you when it comes out. Which plug goes to cylinders one and three? And two and four, because you'll need to know that for when you plug it in. Yeah, four. I'm going to these off, and yeah. by the look of it, I'm going to have to take this off as well to get it that. So from here you can see the one, two and the third bolt is normally on the bottom of that. I've had to cut that off because I've got a coordinate reader so you can't run it. So one of the important things you've got to do, as I mentioned, I think, um, is unplug it from the back. They've got two coils, unplug both of them. And you need to know which coil does cylinders one and four and two and three. So it's dead easy to find out. One and four. Is that one and that one. So that is this right hand coil and cylinders two and three in the centre, this coil. So I'm going to leave them plugs like that. One and four, two and three. We don't need that because I've got to plug them in, in the correct order in the new um, new loom. So there's two questions that Alex wants to know when you order the kit. And that is how many cables are in this plug um, because on my engine my year mx5 mark one there's a couple of different types and there's three on this one all of them use a four pin plug but not always four cables the next thing is about to the opening size of these holes um, 
they're about 26 mil, but Alex sleeves these to be as accurate as he can. Um, he's done them for 25.5 or 25.6 mil, he said. Mine average 25.8 mil whole size. So they all fit really nice and snug because rattling around is what kills these cores and they fit lovely. I'm not going to pop that one in yet. What I'm going to do is put the lithium grease on there. Or chrome molly grease, actually, this one is. They do that to all four. Um, I've been facing the same way. Should look smart. So, pop that one in cylinder one, um, and then should have it click. Push the clicks. That has not clicked. Try again. There we go. Click that time. And that's how they are installed. So we rotate them to come out the side. I think we'll see how we go. I'll get the other four fitted and then plugged into the standard loom. Wire and harness. So, what I might do is uh, plug these in first. There we go. That was a little tougher. Right. Um, so, I think I said one and four this side, and two and three that side, and Alex has uh, just scratched number one into that one, so that goes in here. And this one, number two, goes in the core for two and three. Well, I need another one later. Took them down there. Pop them over where the injector harnesses are. And then I've got to run this side of the cable down here through into where the ECU is. So at this point, obviously, I've already installed an ME221, which you would need to have had done to do this kind of conversion, or as any standalone ECU. Um, yes, yellow and blue cable. I'm going to put a bit of tape around that, feed it through my hole that I've made down here to where the ECU is, and then I'll meet on the inside. So this is the um, standard ECU case at the MX-5 with an ME221 board in there. I've took the case off. I'm not showing you that because you've already fitted an ME221 by this point. Um, so the bit I actually need is here. So if I flip this over, that is the extra plug. That's the extra plug that's fitted. Um, I've just popped it on. Now, the reason you've got to cut this case is that is pretty much the same height as the case lid when it's flipped over. So, just need to drill it because obviously the cables need to go in there, the pins do. What I'm going to do is just put a touch of grease on each of these corners. A bit more just there, just so it stands proud. Because I'm going to flip that over into position. Should put a little mark on the case. Just pop that on. A little bit of gentle with these. Just touch that on there, and then yeah, there we go. That'll do. See the markings there and there. That's enough. So I'm going to pop this down safely uh, in its bag that it come in. Take this back off, clean the grease off that, and then we'll uh, cut that square out of there, making sure it's big enough to fit that through. There we go, two horrible cuts. <laughs> uh, right, I'm gonna have to neaten them up. I do have a Dremel, and what I'll do is I'll just elongate them holes. So what you need to do, have a look down that hole you've cut, 
and on your ECU will be um, each of them outputs has like a desi designation and one of them will say coil 3 one will say coil 4 so all you do is plug your two cables into the back you see the pins have got little tabs on them little locking tabs make sure they're not got any debris on it push them into the back of the white connector you let them click and then make sure that they do line up with the ones that are identified as coil 3 and coil 4 slide it in till it clicks that should be it, shouldn't have any pushback pins then, should not force this in, nice and gentle. And then what we'll do is grab a bit of electrical tape and just go like just over the excess hole, just to stop any dirt and that going in there. I do this around the yellow plug as well, but that's up to you. I'm running with an ME221, which means that I get mighty. Motorsport Electronics integrate to an environment. Um, if you're running with Megasquirt, you'll get your own. But what you need to do in here, it's, it's dead simple, um, is go to your I.O. setup, change your output settings, the little coil 3 to coil 3, and then coil 4 output. These are them two new cables that we put in to coil 4. Uh, so once we've done them, you need to go back to the start, go down here and go to your ignition driver and you're not running mode wasted spark anymore, well we're running wasted spark coil on plugs, cops, you need to do that, let it go green to make sure it's sent, obviously I'm not sat in the car at the moment, um, but this is, it makes no difference, I do this on the table, then I'll go to the car, plug it in, I'll save this and then load up the uh, calibration after that. So, you then what you've got to do is go on to, uh, just just go on to empty one of these, I'll, I'll go on to boost for now. Um, you could go into mapping or any of these. You need to go down this left hand side, your ignition, you need your ignition dwell table. Which is, there, ignition dwell. And we need to change this. You can set this whole table in one go. Press enter and go 2.5. Set it all at 2.5. However, Alex Hickson, the tuner, has told me that he's given a lot higher number here, a lot lower number down here, basically. So you get a much stronger spot for a faster um, start up of the car and it'll protect the coils under high loads. So you need to edit these manually. Um, I've already half done this. Let me show you my half done one. Load calibration. Yes, I do an offline mode. Now, where's that table? I think I left it in the start menu, my other one. Hmm. And I'll open it up again. Ignition dwell. Right, so this is half done. These are the figures you need. Um, if you buy the kit off Alex, he already gives you this. But, so you see these are a lot higher up in this quarter of the graph. These are all 3.5 at the moment because that's the standard setting. So, what I've done is manually type in the first five rows here. So, you need to make sure your Y and your X axis are same as this if you're going to do this. Um, again, I accept no liability if this goes wrong for you, but 7.15 across the top. So I'll show you how to input it. If we go here, I can go the first five are the same. So 500 RPM to 2,500 RPM. Press enter 5.6, which is the figure that I need for a 7.2 RPM uh, load. So that is now 5.6 milliseconds is what you're telling it. So if you do that all the way down here and then all the way down this column, what you can then do for the middle ones, save you putting in all the little bits, is do that, right click, interpolate, output, horizontally. And then it will it will basically do your mid-ranges for them. And go all the way down 
interpolate and just keep doing that until you get your full your full map done I'll uh, load up my full one load calibration where is it where did I put it where did I put it anyway let's get back into there I'll open it up there it is so that's what it should look like so there's the three columns at the end that are all the same figure your first five columns are all the same figure for six columns even are all the same figure and then I've just interpolated what's in between right the way down to the bottom and it gives you this this kind of wave you can see it in a 3d if you want right get rid of that go back to your start menu Again, making sure you've got waste of spot coil on plugs and in your IO setup, you've got coil three and coil four activated. Right, and at this point, you can try starting the car. The car should start perfectly fine. Really strong, actually. Um, you need to switch it off. You need to switch it off because you don't want this on waste of spot. That is just a trial. So then you need to change it. You'll burn out your plugs doing that, not your plugs, your um, coil packs. You need to go to fully sequential press enter um, it normally comes up with this power cycle so you need to knock the car off back on again and then try starting it mine did not start so what Alex has said here is this number because it's so high I just had to minus 360 off it um, because obviously the, the gear at the back that picks up on your um, ignition is on your exhaust, not on a 1.8, it's on your intake cam. They rotate half the amount that your crank does. So all it's saying is I need to take 360 degrees off that because um, my ECU thinks it's a full rotation out. So if that's um, a low number below 360, then add 360. If it is a high number, like well, I've got 643, then minus 360 off it. Yes, which I think I did do. Um, press enter again make sure that's there power cycle the car and then it should fire up that time and that's it that's your all done so I uh, hope you enjoyed that and I'll finish off with a bit of an exhaust clip on how the car's running now with the um, corn on blocks they do sound so good